Hello, my people. Today, we're doing five more of those charts and graphs questions, but these are the sentence completion style questions, and I'm going to show you how to do them in five minutes. You're going to see, first of all, that the question for these is always very similar. What data from the chart most logically completes the text? And so what I want to do is really focus on the sentence that I'm going to complete and the sentence just before that. That's where the key information is going to be. This number is quite low considering there's 538 representatives and these minority groups make up almost half the population. Representative Joanne Kelwick says this issue is most egregious in the Senate. That we really should focus on the Senate since that's the sentence that I'm trying to complete. The first one says there are only two American Indian or Alaskan Native representatives, but they're not in the Senate. It says that there's like one color for the House and one color for the Senate, and I look at the American Indian one and it, those are not the Senate color, so A is actually wrong. B, there are only five Hispanic representatives. Again, that's already wrong because that's not true in the Senate. There are only three female minority representatives out of a body of 100 people. Now that is going to be the right answer because we have proof that there are just three female representatives in the Senate. Well, I can safely say that that is the right answer. For all of you people freaking out about the part where it says 100 representatives, you need to know a little bit about how the United States works. The Senate has 100 representatives, and that kind of information is stuff that the SAT assumes you know, because this is an American test. So don't get upset that you don't see that information in the text. I can still confirm it with the data. In our second paragraph, it's really short, so I'm just going to read the whole thing. It says, historically, the man in a marriage was considered the breadwinner, and that is the person that earned the most. That has changed significantly over the last 50 years. Now, there are more married households where both people earn about the same same amount, 29%. But there are also, okay, so I think what I want to do here is find that trend towards more balanced marriages or even focusing more on the extreme fact that like some women are actually the breadwinner now. The first one says a surprising 16% of marriages where the woman actually earns more than the man. This would contrast perfectly with the other statements made in the paragraph and it would really show that progression. So let's just take a look at the data. And sure enough, in 2022, I see 16% where the woman makes more than the man. A is my best answer. One of the most surprising findings in recent years is that the percentage of Latinos identifying as Catholic has steadily decreased. Latino studies expert Ricardo Herrera argues that this change has nothing to do with Latinos, however. Rather, he claims that this simply reflects the general trend of people abandoning religion which is supported by blank. What we're looking for is some data that shows that people are just abandoning religion in general. And the first thing here says, the decline in Catholicism among Latinos from 62. Okay, so that's not what he wants us to point out. He wants to look at religion in general. B says the fact that Latinos saw a decrease in affiliation with all faiths between 2018 and 2022. That would support our answer, all faiths. So if I look at the data to see if I can confirm B, if I look at 2018, I can see that other faiths was 3%, but now in 2022, it's 4%. So B is not technically true. C says the increase in Catholic affiliation from 2013 to 14, that's not gonna support the argument at all. And that leaves us with D. The 18% increase in respondents citing no religious affiliation is your best answer. Okay, researchers were curious to determine what variables predict a person's awareness of AI technology. They administered a test and they asked several questions about their internet use and how familiar they were with AI to evaluate self-reported knowledge. They found out that the best predictor was. Okay, so we're looking for the best predictor of someone's familiarity with AI technology, their internet usage, or is it their self-reported knowledge of AI? The first one says internet usage, since those who use the internet very little had the most tests with low scores. I generally don't want to choose that negative option. B says it's impossible to determine. That's usually going to be wrong. C, self-reported knowledge of AI as 40% of those who claim to have a lot of knowledge about AI had perfect test scores. That would support our argument here. Let's take a look. That is the largest group of any group that had good test scores. So that would be my best answer. I'm going to say C and move on. Here it says recent surveys find that most Americans think that the government and private businesses are not doing enough to reduce the effects of climate change. Nevertheless, researchers found it odd that on the individual level, there was a surprising inconsistency. One of the things I notice here is that, you know, those individuals are also ranked here. It says you yourself as an individual. I'm pretty sure my answer is going to have something to do with that variable. The first one says they're generally doing the right amount, second only to environmental advocacy organizations. There's nothing inconsistent about that. Environmental advocacy organizations should be doing more. B says they are not doing too little overall, 47%, yet when asked about ordinary Americans, that number jumps to 66%. That does seem like an interesting inconsistency. What it seems to be suggesting here is that most people think they are doing a better job than the people around them. And when everybody says that, it's kind of inconsistent. It's, it shows that there's a disconnect 
between people's perceptions of themselves and perceptions of the people around them. I like B, I think that's our best answer. The sentence that we're trying to complete is gonna give us a clue in to which direction we should go, and the previous sentences will really establish the context that we're trying to prove with the data. When you understand that context, it becomes so much easier to eliminate answers and just pick the ones that work. And again, once you see an answer that works, go ahead and check the data, confirm it, mark it, move on. This is the end of my SAT short series and it's also probably gonna be the end of most of my SAT videos because I feel like with two months worth of content, you have more than enough stuff for you to get good scores on the SAT, but there's so many other things we have to focus on on your applications. I really appreciate all of you watching these videos though. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. And if you have questions, you can go ahead and leave them in the comments below. But the SAT is just one small part of your application and we need to talk about so many other things. So that's what we're gonna start doing now. I am totally done with SAT for a while. Thank you so much. I'm out of here.